Hello and welcome back to The Note. Could the global fund management industry be contributing to systemic risk in the financial system? Now that's certainly a question worth asking uh, and indeed the Treasury Department in the US did ask it in a big report late last year. Now let's hear what the, how the fund management industry is responding to this. Obviously it's a matter that needs a lot more research and a lot more discussion and so today we have with me uh, the chief economist of the Investment Company Institute over from Washington, Brian Reed. Brian, thank you very much for joining me today. You're very welcome, thank you. Let's start by taking a look at a chart which uh, certainly tends to suggest that there's a big correlation between fund flows uh, and moves in the markets. On the, the red line, we're, we're looking at net uh, cash flows into, uh, into mutual funds, and the blue line shows you wh wh what returns have been like. Doesn't that suggest that there is indeed something systemic going on, that, there is a, 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 that, that equity mutual funds in some way do drive stock markets? So the correlation, the question is whether that's causing anything. Yes. So, and that is the real question here. And you can see the correlation is pretty tight. Yes. The, but the real question is, in the market, who is that marginal investor? Who is the investor that is driving the price? Mm. So we can be following along with the market and being an inframarginal investor. And, and that's what we, I think the report didn't look at. And what we really need to do more research and to understand who is the ultimate driver of that price movement. Okay, so but you, you, the argument would be that in many ways it's more that uh, flows are driven by the market rather than the other way around. Classic story is that retail investors sell at the bottom and buy at the top. That's, that's more what's going on here. And, and in many ways even stickier than that. In, sat, in fact, the vast majority of the assets just sit there throughout the entire period of volatility as they did in 2008. You know, outflows of 1% or 2% is um, sort of sort of large relative for a mu U.S. mutual fund, actually. Okay, let's take a look at uh, those funds as a proportion of the total assets of the industry. And this suggests that back in the, uh, particularly in the 80s and the 90s, there really was quite a big impact on, on funds from the flows as they came in. Why is, it, why is it reduced recently? What is the story we're seeing here? So what we're seeing is really the effects of the growth and diversifying of the investor base. Uh, 401ks and individual retirement accounts, which are long-term investments, really grew very rapidly in the 90s and the 2000s. And those investors are even more fixed and less likely to re react to a market event uh, than what was happening in the 80s. The 80s also saw really kind of the first introduction of funds for the individual investor to come in out of very quickly. Right. And so that's what you saw, the volatility there. But now we see a far more stable base, even though the industry is 16 times greater than it was back then. Okay, and now let's take a look at that in proportion of, uh, as a proportion of trading. Obviously, there's far more trading uh, going on these days than, uh, than used to be there, than used to be the case. The, what's fascinating here is that sales by um, mutual funds actually dropped significantly as a proportion of sales during the worst of the crisis there mm -hmm. in 08 and 09. That's correct. What we found is that, and this really goes back to that original point, mm. did, are they correlated, but are they causal? What this would suggest, if, if you look at this, the, the percentage of the trading coming from mutual funds, and this is just their sales because many mm. funds are still buying in the market as well. Yeah. The sales accounted for about 5% of the overall trading in the, in the market during the crisis. Uh, keep in mind that mutual funds hold about 25% of the stock, fund, uh, stock assets in the United States. So their trading was a small proportion of their, uh, relative to their overall share, in fact, and it fell. Uh, and so that means that most of the trading is going on by some other investor. More, those investors are more likely to right. be that marginal investor. Probably hedge funds, I suppose. A variety of investors, yeah. uh, possibly, yes. I suppose one final question, just looking at that Treasury report, is, is the concern that uh, perhaps the way in which mutual funds invest create, tends to create bubbles at the margin. They will tend to all go into the same stocks at the same time, particularly if they're index funds. Uh, they have a, a tendency to hug the index, which we all know about, called you know, generally referred to as closet indexing. Do you, do you think there's any truth to the notion that that kind of pattern of behavior by mutual funds could uh, stoke systemic risk? I think even though indexing has grown in the United States, the range of indexes and, and their sort of their strategies or mandates have actually broadened over time. 
Hmm. So in fact, when I as an investor go and get help from a financial advisor, they may have me invested in a variety of index funds, all with somewhat different strategies. I think that greater diversification, at least for the retail part of this market, is actually dampening down the correlations that we're seeing uh, because they're trying to invest in a large range of assets in uh, asset markets. Okay, Brian, thank you very much indeed. I think what we can all agree on is that this is a debate worth having and that it's very healthy that we're having it. It's hard to believe that uh, the fund management industry could contribute as much to uh, systemic risk in the financial system as, say, the banking industry does, but it's still very much worth collecting the data to be sure about what the situation is.